Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about oxidative stress and the current coronavirus pandemic. And oxidative stress is the imbalance or the formation of too many oxygen-free radicals inside of your cells. And when we think about oxidative stress, the thing to take note of is that in all of our healthy cells right now, as we're breathing in air, I'm breathing in oxygen right now, our cells are using the oxygen to create water and ATP. They're taking so the oxygen comes together with sugar, and your body basically is reducing this oxygen into uh, water. And the process of doing that is resulting in the formation of energy that our cells need in a usable form, which is called ATP. And so the formation of oxygen-free radicals, which I'm going to denote with these red dots here, is something that's happening in our cells right now. And in a healthy, normal person, your levels of oxygen radicals are kept at a at a specific range and so your body has ways of getting rid of these oxygen free radicals and these come in the form of a lot of antioxidants so when people talk about making sure that you eat your fruits and vegetables the vitamins a c and e that come from the fruits and vegetables are antioxidants that help naturally your body decrease the levels of these oxygen free radicals and make sure that it's kept low and kept in that safe normal range Another pathway that your cells are using to keep oxygen-free radical concentrations at their expected levels inside of your cells is through the use of glutathione. And I'm going to denote glutathione as this yellow dot here. And so what happens in a reaction inside of your cells is that you'll have a free radical and it will react with two glutathiones. And these glutathiones have a thiol in them. Uh, they're based on cysteine, which is an amino acid. And so what happens is that these two glutathiones are able to give one electron to this uh, free radical, which only has one electron. So it's able to give this free radical uh, an electron pair, and having that pair is able to basically make this free radical no longer as damaging to your cells as it otherwise was. And so when these two glutathiones come together, they're going to form a disulfide bond and a new molecule that I'm denoting with this blue dot here. And so by coming together and taking away this free radical, we now form a new chemical species, which is this single molecule with that disulfide bond. And so uh, your cells have ways of basically changing this disulfide bond and by uh, reducing it back into these two uh, original uh, glutathiones. And so uh, this is all happening inside our cells right now in order to keep the concentrations of these free radicals at a safe level. And so another mechanism that we know of for reducing the levels of glutathione has to do with angiotensin. And this is going to be a cell that I'm gonna represent, and this is gonna be the ACE2 receptor on your cell. And so the way that the coronavirus gets into your cells is by binding onto the ACE2 receptor. But not thinking about the coronavirus right now, the normal job on a healthy cell of the ACE2 receptor, the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor, is to convert angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 1,7. And so this enzyme is performing this process of basically consuming angiotensin 2 and creating more angiotensin 1,7. And so why do we care about that in relation to this discussion is that angiotensin 2 is involved in the creation of free radicals. So having more angiotensin 2 is going to result in having more oxygen free radicals. And angiotensin 1,7 is another molecule that we know is involved with reducing the levels of, angi uh, of your oxygen free radicals in your cells. So having a buildup of ACE2 and a reduction in the concentration of, ACE of angiotensin 1,7 is believed to cause an increased level of oxygen free radicals inside of your cells. So with that out of the way, we now understand uh, about our oxidative stress and the issue is that in a lot of these diseases, our line of thinking is that the reason that the effects or why these viruses are harmful to our cells is that, you know, in addition to hijacking our cells' machinery, they are creating an extreme amount of these free radical species. And so these free radicals are things that are doing lots of damage to other cells and causing people to potentially become critically ill. And so our hope is, is that if we can find other ways to basically get reduce the levels of these free radicals, we might be able to help more people not get as sick or not get as symptomatic when they are exposed to something like the coronavirus. And so with the coronavirus, tying this back into the conversation, 
is that the receptor binding domains on the spike proteins of the coronavirus have affinity for the ACE2 receptor. So there's going to be competitive inhibition for this ACE2 receptor, and it's no longer going to be able to do its normal job of converting angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 1-7, resulting in more free radicals. And so what one possible mechanism is for us to help reduce the concentrations of free radicals in patients or in people in general is to provide them with supplements and supplements are over-the-counter things that's very hard to overdose on and it's you don't generally get any negative effects from it and so one supplement that physicians and other people can recommend and I want to make a very clear note here that I am not a certified healthcare professional so I would strongly encourage you to ask and consult your physician before taking any of these things but do ask them about it is that this NAC supplement here and I'm not sponsored by them and I don't care if you buy it but I'm just letting you know the current research on this these NAC supplements function by basically taking the disulfide bonds inside of these molecules and inside of your cells they're able to break those disulfide bonds to get you back your glutathione and having more glutathione is good because more glutathione is now able to take away those oxygen free radicals so it's basically able to help regenerate the concentrations of glutathione inside of your cells and so with a study that was done many years ago in Italy researchers were looking at the symptoms of people who had the H1N1 virus and they conducted a double-blind clinical trial with around 262 patients and over 79 percent of these patients were over the age of 65 and what they did is they took the uh, a control group and they gave them a placebo, which is a fancy way of saying it didn't do anything, but it was a pill, so they took it just like any other group would. Um, and the other group, they gave two 600 milligram supplements of NAC to this group. And so with the group that was receiving the uh, placebo, the group that was not receiving NAC, they had symptoms. So when they were infected by the uh, H1N1 influenza virus, which is another respiratory virus like the coronavirus is, they showed symptoms 78% of the time. They had severe symptoms and they needed to see go to the hospital. With the group of patients who was taking the NAC supplements, that number dropped from 78% down to 25%. And so this was a very promising finding in this study because what it was telling physicians and what you know we are led to believe is that taking these NAC supplements is able to successfully increase the levels of these glutathiones and having more glutathiones means that we're able to reduce the levels of free radicals when your cells are in the process of fighting coronaviruses and so this was a very great finding. And so what some people are currently doing and there are clinical trials currently being run uh, is seeing if these NAC supplements are going to provide a great way for us to basically reduce the severity of symptoms from these diseases. A very clear note that I want to make clear here is that the NAC supplements are not a cure. They are a treatment. And so in both groups, in the control group and the placebo group, they were equally likely to get infected by the H1N1 uh, virus. And so this isn't preventing you from getting infected by the virus. What this is doing is it's basically helping your cells or helping your body prevent the damage that otherwise would be done to it if it didn't already have these NAC supplements to help the to help reduce the levels of free radicals when your body was in that peak moment of fighting the disease. And so the hope is that by taking these NAC supplements, you are able to prevent the likelihood that you as much damage would be done to your body as otherwise would. And so, again, this is all in theory, and we have seen some very promising clinical trials that show that this could help. And a final note I also want to make here is that with the NAC supplements, these are things where in the paper it was also cited that there were no adverse effects. So what this means is that people who took these NAC supplements were going to, did not have anything bad happen to them. So the way I'm looking at this is if you take these NAC supplements, Worst case scenario, you don't notice anything and it doesn't help, but best case scenario, you take it and it's able to help your body fight off the symptoms of the coronavirus. And so in that regard, I think that this could be worth a lot of people's attention. And in addition to that, in addition to taking any supplements, keep eating your fruits and vegetables, keep taking those antioxidants that come from strawberries and berries and you know all kinds of fruits and vegetables, just keep eating right. 
and exercising regularly, it's a great way to help your body maintain the concentrations of free radicals and keep them at that healthy level. And also, do consult your physician if you are feeling sick. Make sure that you get them involved early on in this process because there are tools and resources that healthcare professionals have available to them. NAC is a supplement that you can take that could help you reduce the severity of your symptoms. So I just wanna make that very clear right now uh, and continue to make good lifestyle decisions. Thank you all for watching and I will talk to you next time. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Please stay safe and wash your hands and take care.